Hey y'all, this is Sarah and welcome back to part two. I'm sorry there's a part two without warning. An Amber Alert came up on my phone while I was recording and it shut um, the recorder off. So hopefully that turns out okay. But um, this is where I am so far. And I mentioned before, there's a separate video on all the seashells that you see here because I did one spread last week with nothing but seashells. So this is where I'm at at this point. I want to talk about getting into the coloring and what I did to um, color at least my seahorse images. So I want to jump into that. I'm going with kind of some aquas and mint greens was mine, but honestly, I think I've seen seahorses in a lot of colorful ways, so you could probably get away with pretty much any color scheme. You could make this one super colorful if you wanted to. I'm starting out, I couldn't tell you what color this actually is, or um, I don't even know what brand this highlighter is, but this is a really, really, really pale, um, faint mint green color. And this is what I'm going to use as my base color. And I'm not even sure how well it's going to show up for you guys. So I'm not, in some spots, I'm getting my coverage fairly even. And maybe you can see that. I got a little closer for you. So the front side of him, I'm making much lighter. And I'm not coloring the entire thing in because I will be using some darker shades, some darker colors. If you find it easier, right now we're just trying to get coverage. So if you find it easier to go in and do something like this, the tip of this marker is definitely not very wide. It's a narrow one, but this is the lightest sh shade of this green that I had. And you don't even have to use multiples. I'll try to do, I'll see if I can manage to do my other one with just one marker. I'm gonna try, I can't promise it because I don't even remember which marker I used um, for the test run on that one, so. Okay, I think I've got fairly decent coverage. So mostly I just did um, kind of his front section here. And like I said, this marker is so faint, I'm not even sure if you guys can see it. I've got a lot of bright lights in here and it kind of fades out my color sometimes. So that's where I'm at at this point. I'm bringing in just a slightly darker version of this one and I'm going to do the opposite area. And I'm just turning it the opposite direction and make it easier. Maybe you can see that. I did forget on his little his little fin here. I want the the tip of that fin. I didn't even go all the way down to his back. I just did um, the tip of the fin, and I'm not even sure that color is dark enough. So, this one's a hair darker than that, so let's go with it. And you can see how close these kind of are. So at this point, I'm going to come in, and the same way that we did kind of darkening this area with our ink pen, oops, sorry, we're going to swoop up. So, on these little things that I keep calling scales. Oh, 
I'm just brushing a little color along a similar path where I did the darker pen. And I'm not even being too precise with it. Just getting a little color to it. I'm using that chisel tip to kind of give it a shape, a curved up shape. So while I've got this darker color, up here where we did these little sections, I might swoop a little color right in there and a little color in there and a little extra color in there. You might could even do a little around the eyes. I'm certainly going to do under that neck portion. And I feel like this part might could use quite a bit darker. I'm taking it now and going to do my best to try to just run that tip up the back. And then I'm going to do the same thing right there along that fin line. I might do it somewhere around this tail. Now remember, I'm not a professional artist. I don't know the true places to shade, things like that. But we kind of get the vibe at this point. So now that I have that darker color on there, and I think maybe a little around his chin. I might go a little around his chin line here. Just a dash. I think now that I have that part done, let's see. I'm looking for a color that a color that is somewhat in between that I can blend these with. Maybe this one is. I'm just bringing in this green color. I don't like the tip on this one. I'm going back to this. So this tip is a little, it's a little juicier. So it's wetting that darker color again. And it's pulling some of that darker across there. And you can see as I layered that up, now there's a lot more dimension. So really I'm just pulling those colors inward. You might want to get fancy and you can do that slightly lighter color across these parts. Have you noticed there's some white left on his tail? I think I'm going to leave it. I think I'm going to leave it. I have got this Dollar Tree Crafter Square um, white marker and it says it's metallic but and they've got several colors like this however the white one I don't really find to be very metallic the other ones actually are they do have like a metallic shimmer the white one really doesn't to me so I'm gonna take this white one and I just ran it down his belly a little I might do it at the top of some of these. Along that spot. Maybe somewhere up at the top here. I don't know. You can play with it depending on um, how much little highlight you want on him. You can certainly play with it. And if you don't like what you did, you can always come back and color back over it. It colors over fairly okay. So this little thin area here. I'm just going to try to drag some of that color up a little. And let's see if I jumped too quick. Nope. Looks fine on the back. 
I, I figured I was pretty safe. These are highlighters, and the colors are actually really pale. So, so far, we're doing pretty good. This is what my little fella looks like at this point. He's got some, some dimension. He looks... Um, he looks a little more detailed than I think our original stencil. That's a big jump from this look right here to that look right there. Now I'm going to jump over to this other guy. And I said I was going to try to do this one with one marker. I cannot on this. I could. I just don't remember what other marker I used to begin with. But I'm going more into... This is kind of a sage green right here. I don't know if you can tell the difference. This one is kind of a sage type green on this side. And I thought I'd add... Um, Maybe a little aqua to this side just to have a little variance or you could make them both the same. You could make them completely opposite, but I'm going to go this route. This is a brush marker in 114, and from what I have started to learn, most of the colors pretty much work from um, brand to brand. So you're going to get something close to this if you've got a different brand. And I think this one's pretty pale. And I'm hoping this is the right one. And I'm going to do this the same way. I just want to get most of that coverage on the front side of his body. Since the, the back area, if you notice, once again, I might not always hit all the way to the end of those lines. I'll leave stuff like that because then it just, most of the time, ends up looking like I did some kind of fancy intentional highlight. Same with the area around the tail. I might not get that little section right up in that curve, up super close to it. That's fine. Now it looks like that was super intentional. And we both saw it was not super intentional. Or we all saw. So around his face. And I pretty much gauged it that if I got close to this back row of little scales or whatever, I was close enough. The other spot I want to do is, um, and the lightest color is that, that very tip of that fin. And because I'm not sure which marker I use, I'm going to try the same marker that I used on this side against this more aqua color and see how that blends. I still may have to change it, but we'll see. Oh, no, I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay. So we're doing the same thing. The only thing that I might change by doing it this way is um, because that aqua color is underneath there, helping alter slightly what this sage looking marker looks like, I actually might need to do the back. Because it's, it's using that color to kind of alter and blend to make a new, a new color. So just in case I need it, I just went ahead and finished the whole thing. I'm going to get back to this part. And I'm just swooping it down. These little bottom ones are a little harder with this tip, so I'm just barely swooping into that. I'm going to go ahead and take this wider tip. Come down his back. And maybe part of the inside of that tail. Catch a couple more of the little scales part. The area behind his head. His little sections that come down there. This 
So you can see maybe the color difference. Let's see if I can get them guys close together. So just by changing the base of what marker I use, we already have um, quite a bit of a difference in what color these two guys appear. But by doing it that way, they also still blend pretty well together. Like they don't look too shocking opposite of each other on these pages. So we'll go in and do similar to um, what I did before. Bring that color over. Flicking some of that color up. I might pull a little down on this. Bring some around his face. And I'm not entirely sure where all the color should go. I just kind of guess as I'm going. So at this point, I think he's looking pretty good. Now I've got a sage color one and a bit of an aqua one. I can come in the same way with this and hit the tops of some of those with just a little blob of ink. And some here on his belly. Might draw the line to make it look like there's a little shine to his belly or a little light on his, his tummy. Maybe a few spots up there on his head. Not real sure which ones would catch that light just right. But um, this guy decided to try it on his fin a little bit just to see. I'm going to bring it back in that darker sage color and work some of that color up this fin. And I'm loving him. So the next thing that I will do, and this is not necessary, this was just to be extra. I have mentioned before that I am obsessed with white pens and really specifically the Uniball Signo. So, I'm going to come in and just add some white dots all over this little fella. Um, and I'm not even sure if the white dots are going to show up on here. So let me get a little closer and see if that helps. There we go. Oh, a little tip. If you can't get the ink flowing on your gel pens or any, any pen really, but especially these white ones, because the white ones seem to be very fickle sometimes. Um, they, they can be a little problematic on occasion. Dip it in just a little household rubbing alcohol. And honestly, it looks like I need to take a moment and do that to this one. But I've got another one beside me. Let's see if it's working better. So I don't have to stop and do that. Looks like this one's working a little better. So if it does that to you, just dip it in a little rubbing alcohol. Yeah, this one's dotting way better. There we go. So you can do those really anywhere you want to on him. I might do a little around his muzzle. Get a little spot on his eye. Give him a little, give him cute little... Um, kind of anime eyes there. Try to clean some of these little dots up. They didn't turn out that great with that first pen. So he's got a little, a little texture to him. A little more texture to him. I think I might do the same thing with my other little fella. In a few spots. Maybe up here. I 
I probably should have looked at some pictures of real seahorses um, before I did any of this. I did not. I should have done my research. I didn't, but I kind of just colored them to a level that they made me happy. I knew what color scheme that I wanted to use um, to tinker with or close to it. So I was going to find a way to use those colors anyway, even if it's not realistic. So I've done a few of his back. And because I did the video on doing all the little seashells, I won't dive too heavy into showing how I'm um, about to color those. I'll probably pop off screen and finish doing that coloring just because I already know this video ended up longer than I expected and in two parts. And I really hope that whoever that Amber Alert was for, that just that makes me a nervous wreck every time one of those pop up. So I'm just taking my tan marker here and just doing some kind of wobbly lines across that spot. I might do some over here. And I showed this one on the seashell video also, but this was just pretty simple. I'm just throwing some weird lines across there. I'm not going all the way down with them. Just kind of at random. Don't think too hard about it. Just get some lines there. Just some lines of colors. You can see that's all a little crazy. It works out though. Um, I'm just going to go in now with a, a pen real quick and give that sand a little detail. So let's get a little closer. So for me, detail for sand really is just some jaggedy lines, a few dots, few dashes, jaggedy lines. And we've got some sand. Same down here. I might do a little pile of sand. A little jaggedy line. A few dots and dashes. And wherever my pen lands, that's where it puts some ink. And you can pretty much do that with any of these. The one fun thing that I did do with the other one is I did it in my little divider part just to blend all that together and I'll do same over here might do a few extra right under where the things touch the sand but literally it's I'm Dropping and lifting my pen and wherever it, it leaves some kind of mark. That's what I'm rolling with. And you can kind of see. So, I'm going to go off camera and finish coloring some of these. So, these videos don't get any longer than I already do, but... I don't like leaving mistakes out. I don't like leaving details out because the details that I show you, the, the dragging the lines and the those kind of things, those can be applied to a lot of other doodles that you do um, and make it look like you did some details, you did something fancy when really... You, you didn't. I mean, you saw what kind of effort that takes. Um, so I like leaving all the things in so you can use that for other ideas, other artwork or doodles that you want to try. You never know how much the one thing you learn off of here might carry over into something else that you might want to do it on. So I always try to leave that stuff in. I'm just darkening a few things. And, gosh, I, I could almost leave it like that with all those white shells and maybe just outline a few. 
with a really pale um, ivory color. And I bet that would look, let's, let's find out. Let's find out together real quick. So I'll show you what the shells on my practice run look like, right? There's, there's a lot going on there. A lot of color um, dropped into there. And you'd be really surprised to know that the, like the orangey type color that you're seeing there that is the brightest neon orange oopsident that I could have done. So if you use one of these style markers, you guys know what these style are, these style highlighters. Uh, <laughs> the orange is on there, so the caps look like they're going to be a nice soft peachy orange. They are in fact neon as neon can be. And I was doing this while... My family was watching a movie and I didn't want to be rude. So I was kind of doing it in the dark and I did not realize um, just how bright that was. However, once I added all the other colors, it ended up blending out really, really well. I was pretty shocked. That was a thing that sometimes I learn from mistakes. That was one of those mistakes that I actually um, learned a little something from that that neon orange didn't turn out bad at all. I'm not, I'm not a big, big user of neon colors. I have got this super pale number 106 brush marker. I don't get too hung up on, you need the same markers as me. I'm just trying to get you somewhere in a close color range if you're trying to get similar. But if you wanted some really pale markers, some really pale neutrals, I showed this in the other video. This is Crayola's Color of the World 24 count other their classic broad line chunky markers it was 647 on amazon it has got some amazing super amazing neutrals in it um and browns absolutely love it that was such a cool find and um i did a color swatch test and everything worked pretty well so i'm going to uh I think this one, this extra light almond might be close to the marker I'm using. I don't have anything handy to swatch it on to find out, but wow, this one might not even be dark enough, but I'm going to try it. Can you guys see that? So I might could go all the way around this shell, basically just tracing it. It's got a little color around the edges. I basically just outlined that. And I could probably do the same thing to these over here. If I don't like this, this color is light enough, I can color back over it with anything once I let it dry. I'm not doing anything special, you see. I'm just kind of... this. I've used this one so much, it's trying to die on me. So I'm having to really scratch it in there. I do like to show how I color things sometimes because I don't think I color correctly, <laughs> but it works. Somehow it works, but I don't think I do it like the art people do. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not disappointed in that. Let's a little bit. Not disappointed in that. And all I did, I left the white space, but I'm not sad at that. Let's, let's find out on the little, the little tiny shells here. I just left the centers white. Now, I might put a little color on my starfish to make them a little more on the beigey tan side. Just because. But gosh, that made doing these shells super fast and simple. Let's go back and see how it looks. Oh yeah, I think I'm, I, I'm pretty pleased with that. See, that was a discovery we made together. Think I didn't get very much ink there. I wish some of these could be bought individually. I'm gonna have to check into that because I definitely have used this color so much that you can see I've done rubbed um, the name and the label off of it. It's just a, it's just a barely there color. So 
I could probably do most of these shells in that soft neutral color and still love this page. It wouldn't be maybe as colorful as this one with the bit of orange on it, but either which way, I think I could enjoy it. When I pop back, you'll see which way I decided to go. Okie dokie guys, I finished adding my details in, um, getting the coloring for my shells done, and just making a few squares for myself. Got my little squares here, my weather put in. So this is my finished result. I'm gonna bring this up a little closer just cause it's faster. And let you see the details of this little fella. Now that his colors have all dried and um, settled in and you can tell this one's slightly different and all I did really any different was the lightest color I put at the base of him at the um, the bottom level to layer on top of so they've got slightly different colors to one another and I think they blend really well it just gives um, just a tiny bit of variance so they didn't look identical I threw a few other details on that I just hand sketched in and this is my finished result. You could take this as far as you wanted to. Um, and all the color schemes you possibly could think of or create. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a lot. I'm sorry it was two videos. And I plan on hanging out with you guys very soon. Bye, y'all.